There is a, uh, a shrine in uh, St. John, Indiana that if you have not been to, uh, you need to go. We, they are going to sponsor, before we have our keynote speaker, uh, uh, Paul Anderson is going to come up and, and talk with you about this shrine um, and about the passion, frankly, of the gentleman who has built it. Uh, it is a remarkable site, one that you need to take your groups to see. So please join me in welcoming Paul Anderson with the Shrine of Christ's Passion. Morning, everyone. Thank you for attending this great conference. Don't the uh, group travel family do a great job in putting everything together? Everything's so organized. So we really thank them for that, and thank you for you know uh, participating. I've got one goal by standing up here today, and that's to convince every one of you to put the Shrine of Christ Passion on your itinerary. That's what I want to do. So let's give it a whirl. So the Shrine of Christ Passion, it's located in a little town in northwest Indiana. It's about six and a half hours from here, about uh, less than an hour out of downtown Chicago. But about 17 years ago, a family that was very blessed decided that they wanted to build a place where people of all faiths could draw closer to the Lord. They wanted to help change the world, and I think every one of us in this room can say today that the world certainly needs to be changed. So, you know, they wanted to build this shrine. And the shrine, what it does, it shows the pain and suffering of our Lord that he endured to save us. You know, that's what it's all about. So they wanted to touch people's hearts with his, his endurance of this pain and inspire people to go out and make a difference in the world. It's truly a one-of-a-kind destination. I mean, you can travel all over the world, and you know what Diane had for us, hey, that's great, we've been over Amargau. I mean, it, it's an amazing place. But right here in the United States, right here in a little town in northwest Indiana, 30 acres of flat Indiana cornfields, and I know you guys got corn in Ohio, but we got corn in Indiana too, I'll tell you that. But uh, more flat, that's for sure, than around here. So whether you're a religious person or not, whether you're faithful or not, you can walk the prayer trail and you're gonna feel refreshed and renewed. So you don't have to go to the Holy Land the Shrine of Christ Passion brings the Holy Land right here. It's an incredible, interactive, multimedia destination. There's 18 scenes all done in life-size bronze sculptures along a half-mile path. It's a winding path, beautifully landscaped. It's, uh, as you walk along the path, you'll hear original music that uh, changes 18 different times as you lock, walk along the path. The, the mood of the music matches the mood of the scene. It just gives you the look and feel of the Holy Land. At each scene, you just touch the button, you hear the story. Maybe like you've never heard before. You can sit with Jesus at the Last Supper table. You can pray with him in the garden, journey with him along his path to crucifixion, enter the empty tomb and then finally witness his ascension into heaven. So after eight years of construction, millions of dollars, the shrine opened in 2008. Last year we attracted approximately 200,000 visitors. We want more, that's why we're here. And I wanna convince you to put it on your itinerary. There's no charge for this experience, it's free. How often do you hear that? Here's a few comments that our visitors have made. It's absolutely free, but it's a priceless experience. Another one said, I've gone to church all of my life, but I've never understood the story like I do now. Another said, you can see it, touch it, hear it, and then you can actually feel it. You can feel what he did for us. Now I'd like to introduce a, f a friend of mine and a great supporter of the Shrine. 
She's from La C Broadcasting in South Bend, Indiana. Their TV and radio stations broadcast all over the world. So this was seen all over the world. So I'd like to introduce you to Valerie. Please, Angie. Ever wonder about the final hours of the life of Jesus, his last supper, and the pain and physical anguish that he experienced in the Garden of Gethsemane? And what about the cross he chose to bear on his blood-stained back for the sins of mankind? Well, here in St. John, Indiana, about 38 miles away from Chicago, is the Shrine of Christ Passion. It's an outdoor sanctuary of 40 sculptures depicting the life of Jesus. It's an amazing place, and I don't want to keep you waiting, so let's go inside. The main entrance to the Shrine of Christ Passion is this immaculate boutique-style gift shop and visitor center. Cathedral ceilings overlook 16,000 unique items, and the shop offers jewelry, souvenirs, big crosses, small crosses, music, and more. Every day is like Christmas upstairs in the gift shop, and no Christmas is complete without dazzling ornaments, joy to the world, and nativity scenes that remind us of the precious birth of the Savior. Downstairs, you'll find a quaint library stocked with Bibles available in every version you could imagine and countless books for adults and children alike. With 120,000 pieces of inventory, the gift shop is a tourist destination all by itself. I could spend hours here, but now it's time for the main attraction. The rear of the gift shop leads to a peaceful pavilion where visitors can eat lunch and begin the half-mile journey of the Shrine of Christ Passion. The Shrine is the brainchild of longtime St. John resident Frank Schilling. His mission is to touch people with a moving illustration of the final hours of the life of Jesus. General Manager Paul Anderson says the Shrine is designed to compel people to make a difference in the world. People come here, you know, whether it's for religious reasons or for artistic reasons, but there, I don't think there's anybody that can walk through here that hasn't been affected in some way. It well, touched their heart. That's the whole purpose. When the, when the Schillings put this together, they wanted to touch people's hearts and inspire them to go out and change the world. That's the whole purpose of this. One of the most recognized images of Jesus throughout history is the Last Supper, and it's my first stop on my tour. In most depictions of the Last Supper, the 12 disciples are seated around the table with Christ in the center. But here at the shrine, Jesus sits alone and seems to beckon visitors to sit with him. The second stop on my tour is a powerful scene called the Agony of the Garden. You'll walk in, you'll see uh, Peter on the right sleeping, John and James. Uh, sleeping, and then you'll come around the corner and you'll see Jesus knelt in prayer at a rock. I mean, just just a beautiful scene. That's one of my most favorite spots. It's so secluded, and you just can get away. You know, you're away from Route 41. You don't hear the traffic, and just an amazing spot. Each sculpture has a listening station that features the voice of veteran broadcaster Bill Curtis. Visitors push a button to hear a description and a meditation of the scene. He advanced a little fell to his knees and prayed, Abba, Father, if it is possible, take this cup away from me. Here, Jesus stands in Pilate's court, condemned to death for crimes he did not commit. Further along the path, Jesus willingly accepts the cross, sometimes falling under the weight of a sinful world. The sculptures capture even the pain Christ experienced at the hands of Roman soldiers. The crown of thorns, his blood-stained brow, the pounding of nails in his hands and feet all capture the meaning of Christ's passion. Visitors from more than 30 countries flock to the Shrine of Christ Passion every year. One of the most impactful scenes 
depicts Jesus hanging on the cross between a murderer and a thief. You can almost hear him cry out, it is finished, as he takes his last breath. At the stone-walled tomb, one can even see the agony in the face of Jesus as the women prepare his body for burial. Jesus didn't remain in the grave, and in the final scene, he ascends into heaven. Isn't that amazing? All the... The vision of two people, two people can definitely make a difference in the world. One thing that uh, I, I remember at the African American Travel Conference last year, there was a speaker there, and she said, don't settle for good, go for great. The founders of the shrine have developed a great destination, but now they've chosen to make it even greater. Now we have Moses at Mount Sinai and the Ten Commandments. So Angie, if you could play that clip, please. mountain. I mean, you don't go to the hardware store and buy blueprints to build Mount Sinai, you know. It took three years to build, a hundred and some loads of boulders hauled in from central Wisconsin to make it look like the Holy Land, the desert. Thousands of loads of clay to build that mountain. And I mean, you walk in and you hear the desert wind whipping around you. You know, that's all part of the sound system. The glow of the burning bush where Moses first encountered God. You press the button and you hear the Ten Commandments dramatically recited in a mission to go out and make a difference in the world. I mean, that's the whole purpose of this whole shrine whether it's the Shrine of Christ's Passion or Moses at Mount Sinai, it's to touch people's hearts and inspire them to go out and make a difference in the world. You know, over the past few decades, the Ten Commandments have kind of been taken out of the public arena. So that's one reason they wanted to build this. You know, parents, a lot of parents don't know the Ten Commandments. They should be teaching their kids the Ten Commandments, but if they don't know them themselves, they can't. So here, you know, we're trying to put this back into the world. And again, like I say, it gives that mission. Go make a difference in the world. Go change your world. You know, that's what this is all about. So I could stand up here a lot longer, and then Joe's going to be pulling me off the stage. But uh, I think the pictures tell it all. You know, the shrine, it's free. It's non-denominational. People of all faiths love it. They come from all over the country. It's solely supported by the gift shop and donations. And that gift shop, ladies, it's become a shopping destination in itself. So we hope that you will come and experience this magnificent place. As CBS News Chicago stated, it's Jerusalem in our own backyard. So as, as you leave today, we've got a gift for each one of you. Be sure to see the ladies out of the uh, exit there. Uh, I want each one of you to take our official Shrine DVD. It's called The Making of the Shrine. It's got interviews with Mr. and Mrs. Schilling and a lot of people that worked on the Shrine, how it changed their lives. But please, uh, you know, stop by, pick one of those up. Stop by our booth. 
Uh, we've got some goodies there for you to, to take away, but uh, stop and say hi to Mr. and Mrs. Schilling. Let them tell you a little of their story. I mean, it's it's an amazing story, you know, what they, they their vision of what, what they did. And it, it's an ongoing vision. We, we never know what he's gonna do. But anyway, it's fun. I hope I've convinced you to put us on your itinerary. It's a, it's a life-changing experience. So come, take the journey, please. Thank you.